Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Goodbye Earth, written by Ogosh. It was a historic time. NA9 reviewed the floating light screen in front of them, simultaneously reading from several others in the periphery. The laboratory around them shifted and morphed like water changing its color into sterile white, molding its shape into perfect sphere as the transparent viewing portal to be used to observe the growing red star only a few units away. The atmosphere in the sphere pressurized in moments, with chemical composition compared to the planet below. With a pulse, the nanite swarm that had collected the samples reabsorbed into the lab walls repurposing themselves as assembling constructs to rebuild the specimen. It is NA9's vocation to collect near-terminal data, information on the brink of oblivion. For the most part, this meant traveling to forgotten corners of the universe, to planets falling into the orbit of their stars, or black holes, or catastrophic collisions with other bodies. Many times, most times, the planets in question holds no value, and is allowed to continue to its fate. However, in the unlikely event that an anomaly is discovered, NA-9 will collect the relevant data, recover specimens, and return them to be catalogued for all others of their kind. This was one of those occasions. The planet, in danger of falling into its star as it transformed into a red giant, had showed evidence of biological life at its pole. An extremely rare event, though not unheard of. The planet itself showed many signs of long-lost civilizations, its structure and people long since turned to dust, its atmosphere and oceans damaged beyond hope of continuing life. NA-9 paid it no mind, as it always does the case with these types of anomalies, that the pre-space-faring sentience would only be discovered hundreds of millions of local cycles after the last of them died. What made this truly abnormal was that the specimen on this planet was recoverable. A complete genome was sequenced and a synthetic body could be constructed to house it, as if it had never expired. It only took a few moments, but the nanites had completed the construction of the specimen. Bipedal, two forelimbs and five digit graspers on each end. A single head with a developed brain and several sensory organs. A dark epidermis and short, dark hairs growing in patches at several parts of the body. NA9 noted the differences in similarities to their own physiology and activated its brain. Marcus jolted awake and heavily inhaled gritted teeth. The overwhelming numbness and fatigue that he had felt only moments ago vanished, replaced by full body tingling and burning lungs. He blinked his eyes wide and shut it several times, adjusting to the light of his new surroundings. As they fully adjusted, he realized two things. He wasn't in water anymore, and he was naked. What the fuck? He gasped, looking up at his exposed body. The frostbite on his fingers was gone, and on his toes. The numbness of the hypothermia was now a comfortable warmth, like he was back at his office in Ottawa. He looked around to see his bright surroundings, a seemingly perfect ball of smooth white stuff, like plastic. He turned around to look out the window behind him, a massive red sun pulsed angrily in front of him. Below him, a planet. His eyes somehow went wider as he made out the shape of Scandinavia and Greenland. But the color was all wrong. The ocean isn't brown. I... I'm in space... Marcus heard a light buzzing behind him and spun around like an animal. Hovering before him was a ten-foot-tall uh, thing. It had two arms and legs and featureless head and a thin body made of the same white material around him. It simply stayed there, floating a few feet in front of him, seemingly waiting. 
Um, I, Marcus said, overwhelmed by the whole experience, his wit fading him. The creature continued to stare. Where am I? Again, no answer. Are you an alien? I think so. It suddenly responded in a voice of a young man, slightly softer and almost metallic sounding. Oh, Marcus started. You speak English. I do now. There was an awkward silence as Marcus stared back at the creature, then around at the area and the window behind him. This is your spaceship. Technically, it is yours. I do not require it, but you do. I have assembled its atmosphere to close approximation of your homeworld. Marcus stared over his shoulder, down at the green and brown planet below. That's Earth, huh? Why does it look like that? Earth? The creature tilted its head, an oddly human piece of body language. The name of the planet. Oh, I'm sorry. I feel as if I've heard that word before. The creature lifted one of its arms and suddenly a cloud of grey smoke appeared in its palm, before vanishing again in the blink of an eye. What was that? Marcus looked back at the magic trick. I have sent an inquiry to the mainframe. I wish to cross-reference the word Earth. The creature lowered its arm. Now, as to answer your question, the creature floated next to Marcus, who nervously took a step back as it floated next to him and looked down at the planet. I do not know what time in your species history you came from, though it is likely that your natural body perished millions of local cycles ago. The creature's face pulsed and a splash of navy blue before going white again. Years, that is your word, millions of years. Marcus had sunk to his knees before it had finished talking, a forlorn look on his face. Then I'm, uh, I died there, and, and this... His eyes filled with tears. From outside the window, Earth began to move away. How did I get you, if I'm dead? I found what remained of your original form buried under years of mounted dust and sand at the bottom of the ocean. Were it not for the unique conditions, there would have not been enough to recover you. As it is, it was only barely enough. Marcus wiped his eyes and nose off his forearm and tried to breathe. There was nothing that he could do now but panic. He took several deep breaths and tried to stop shaking. Are you finding it hard to breathe? Should I adjust the oxygen levels? The creature's voice showed concern. No, no, I'm fine. I just, um, there's a lot to take in. The silence echoed through the empty orb for a few moments as Marcus composed himself. Did we ever get anywhere? Humanity, he asked. That is unclear, began the alien, though the debris of the standing structures shows signs of technology other species achieve at times parallel to space travel. It was like that for you guys. I don't know. My species has existed for so long. We have lost almost all of our history, predating the construction of the mainframe. That sucks. The alien's face splashed blue again. Yes, yes it does. The two stood together at the window watching as Earth moved slowly away, gaining speed. What happens now? In a few minutes, your home world will be destroyed, enveloped by its star as it enlarges through its red giant phase. We may leave if you do not wish to see... No, no. Marcus looked up at the alien suddenly. It's important for the last human to watch the death of his home world, right? The alien looked back down at him. I suppose so. They both turned back and watched the planet speed away, becoming smaller and smaller black dot, racing towards a fireball. Though your original body is dead, the alien cut the silence. This vessel is effectively immortal. Should you wish to join my people and I, you are welcome. Though if you wish to expire, it is understood without judgment, and I will respect your wishes. Marcus stood in quiet contemplation for a few minutes. Can I decide later? Of course. NA-9 and the specimen known as Marcus continued to observe the destruction of the planet Earth. It would be any moment now that the planet would be engulfed in the outermost layer of the star and destroyed entirely. From behind them, NA-9's nanite swarm returned from its inquiry mission to the mainframe. The nanites embedded themselves into NA-9's suit, 
instantly transmitting the relevant data to their brain. Earth, it would seem, was an enigmatic artifact predating the mainframe. Its literal meaning was dirt or soil. But more accurately, it would have been used by the original speakers to describe the land they held the main over. And, as the information came together in N.A.'s mind, they looked at Earth one last time with sudden realization. Goodbye, Earth, said Marcus somberly beside them as he placed a hand on the viewing portal. Earth, N.A. 9 raised their own hand to the portal. The home world. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.